So G Booster Set 2 has released and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to review the entire set and what it's brought to the meta. So G Booster Set 2 supports Aqua Force, Neo Nectar, Narukami, Great Nature, Kiri Chronicle, Royal Paladin, and also has a couple of Cray Elemental cards. I'm not going to go into too much depth about everything because it would just take way too long, but I'm going to go over the key cards from this set for each clan and how it enforces the meta, how it changes everything and stuff like that. First off, we'll look into the Cray Elementals. They do not belong to any clans, but rather belong to every single one. And the first one is the most important card that every player really wants right now, Snow Element Blitza. This is a Cray Elemental Stride, which when it attacks, you can count us one and flip one of your G units face up. This is really good because it can open up your awesome GB GB2s immediately, like Chrono Jets and stuff like that. Most decks will be running this card at 1. Next up we have the second Cray Elemental card, which is Rain Element Tear. It's a card that simply when you call it Soul Blast 2, it's gonna flip as many as you have uh, Cray Elementals out face up in your G zone. So it's only gonna be like once or twice, so it's not that great. Next up, let's start off with the clan that is the cover of the set, Neo Nectar. First off, we have the cover card of the set, Flower Princess of Spring's Beginning, Primavera. Her skill is a bit mediocre, as she counts three and puts back five normal units, and then you discard a card, simply to copy two of your rear guards and call them again. So it forces a new attack, or it can help you make your field back up, but it's such an enormous cost that I'm not too sure if it's that great. Most Neo Nectar decks will be playing this at one. So when talking about Neo Nectar, there's mainly two decks that are going to be showing up in the meta. Musketeers and Maidens. Musketeers directly got two cards just for them, one of which is a critical trigger and one is a limit break remover, just to make sure that Elvira crits for all that is holy! But now moving on to the archetype that was introduced with a trial deck and not really enforced with anything else, the Maidens. Apart from Primavera, the Neo Nectar clan got another stride which is especially good for Maidens but can also be used in Musketeers, and that is Jingle Flower Dragon. This guy basically pumps up your entire field for each copy of a card by two, and that affects stacks, so if you have three of the same cards, it's gonna be plus six on each card, and it's just amazing, makes every line huge. A backup vanguard that Maiden's got is Maiden on the Frill Rod. Her skill is not that amazing, this is a GB1, which when it hits Combust 1, to copy a card that isn't the same card as made in a frill draw, but I don't think it's that amazing and I'm pretty sure there's other backups that you can use from the other sets. And also, Asha is still the best. So the duo of cards, Mare Dream and Mare Hope, are a nice backup if you don't have the promos like Sour Slicer and Maiden, Maiden of Maiden Flower Screen, as they do form a little plus one and it, it is nice to sort of kind of back up your field if you have one of them. So it is a nice little combo, but I'm pretty sure they will have enough space if you have the promos. Maiden's also got another backup card with Vegetable Avatar Dragon, but again, I'm pretty sure there's better cards out there than this one. There's an amazing common for, Ma for Maiden's, which is Barrage Warrior Water Watermelock, which has the same skill as Sour Slicer, so it basically just pumps up each copy of itself. But since you'll only have two of these usually per field, it's not as amazing as Sour Slicer. Next up, there's a nice little tech card in Wheelwind Dragon, which is basically just a little unflipper if it hits at GB1, so that's pretty nice and it's a much more beefed up on Flipper than all the previous ones. Finally, another tech card that I find quite nice is Maiden of Lost Memory. When she hits, kind of two and then draw a card for each copy of her that you have, and also turn one face up. So if you draw two, then it's for free, basically. Next up, moving on to the other green clan, we have Great Nature. So Great Nature got an all new amazing stride in Omniscience Dragon Managarmor. And its skill basically turns your rearguards into glory maelstroms. It's amazing. It's such a good stride. And then there's the main grade 3, which is Big Belly. And it basically has more consistency. It has a nice GB2 and has a lot of draw power behind it. And especially if you pump your field correctly. I feel that most decks will be running Big Belly and one form of the Legions in as a backup. The other stride that Great Nature got was one that's quite different because usually the rare strides require you to hit, but this one you just need to attack the vanguard with. And it's quite nice since it helps you with all the field pumping and stuff, so it is a quite nice card. So since Great Nature only had one legion from the PR pack, we have a new legion in Guru Tiger and Guru Wolf. Guru Tiger himself offers a lot of nice consistency, and I personally like him a bit more than the other legion, and I feel that it will be the main deck that I would go for would be with Big Belly and this legion. His legion mate is also very good, even when it's on the rear guard. When it's at 20k or more, draw a card when it hits. It's very nice. A little tech card that they got, which I don't think we'll see much play, is Balloon Raccoon. It's basically adding another guarding mechanic, and Vanguard is really trying to push these guarding mechanics, 
but I'm not sure how it's working because I don't see many people running this card. A common card that I find to be amazing in Great Nature right now is Sleepy Tapir. It is a binocular Tiger with resist, but it's, in, but it's not even GB1. It is an amazing card, and honestly, like this to be a common is just wow. The double rare that Great Nature got, Crayon Tiger, is a really good card which comes at GB1 once per turn, and basically it's one of the Amber clones, but this one lets you stand a rear guard, give it power, and also draw and retire, but if it will retire. So it's such a good card, and Great Nature is so nice now because a lot of their cards have the wording that first you draw and then retire. So if you can't retire, it's fine because first you'll draw, 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 and then if like if you put it on a uh, Stampsy Otter that can't retire, well then whatever, you just drew for huge loads. So Royal Paladin didn't get that much support this set, but that's fine because Royal Paladin already has huge loads of support. And one of the main cards is Samuel, their new stride, which is basically a drag ruler for Canoblast 2. I see most people running this card at 1, maximum 2. We have Knight of Refinement Benizel, which is good for those Ultimile decks. And then we have Hidden Siege Miron, which adds some more draw power, but I'm not sure how often you will use this card in Royal Paladin, because they already make a lot of plus. And the fact that you have to Soul Blast is going to throw off those Thingsaver decks. Jewel Knight's got two cards in Kimbelinus and Cymbeline. So Kimbelinus is basically Soul Blast to Jewel Knight and he just shields for 15k. So it is a nice shielding mechanic and they are trying to push these shielding mechanics through. But the main card that people are really after from Jewel Knight is Cymbeline. Because when it's placed on Rearguard you can rest it and if you have three or more Jewel Knights you can give another unit plus 10k. Another Jewel Knight unit plus 10k. So this is really good for pushing for damage and stuff like that. It's just such a good card and it's, I see a lot of Royal Paladin decks that use the Jewel Knight engine running this at around 2 because it's really easy to fetch. And you can make plays like go sword me into this and then pump your sword me and stuff like that. It's just, there's so many things you can do with it. Gear Chronicle got a few more cards but I'm only going to go over the really key ones. One of which is Fate Rider Dragon, the new stride, which kind of lets you recycle triggers and also pump up your fuel a considerable amount. So I quite like it, but I can see it being run at one or two, just like Samuel. There's the double rare Glimmer Breath Dragon, which lets you put back a card if you have a Chrono Jet Vanguard. But I think it's only going to start being useful once we have the Pock Maker Dragon from Fighters Collection. Gear Chronicle also got the critical treatment that DP and Royals also have. And this one is exclusively for Chrono Jet, and basically when your Chrono Jet attacks, you put the critical in the soul, draw a card, and give your Vanguard plus 5k. It's the same as every ever critical. The nice thing was that Gear Chronicle got a new Legion, and this one is basically like Chrono Jet, but higher power and not restricted to GB2. But it does have the condition that you have to put something back to the bottom of the deck, but if you build your deck based around that, it's going to be very easy to do. It is still a pretty hard choice what you want to run in terms of legions because I think the other one is good because the legion mate is a silent tom but this one is good because the vanguard is just the same as Chrono Jet but without GB2 so it's really up to the player. A nice little grade 2 that Gear Chronicle got is Steam Maiden Ishin which is the first resist for Gear Chronicle and it also acts as a silent tom so in case you run the new legion you can run her instead of to replace the old legion, legion mate. I'm sorry that I'm sounding very confusing. There's a couple more nice cards like Mist Geyser Dragon who lets you really pump up your field by becoming 11k or even 16k booster. And there's also the new stand trigger, Vainglory Dream Gear Cat, which just pumps up one of your units by 10k when one of your opponent's rear guards is put into, the, into their bottom of the deck. So this stand trigger is really nice and I see it being run of like 3 or 4 like most of these amazing stand triggers are nowadays. So one of the big boys in this set is Narukami. But sadly the deck that tops with Narukami is not fully out of this set, but this set helps it a lot. But first there's a different deck that got nice support and that is Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion by getting a Legion in Dragonic Kaiser Crimson. Basically what the Legion does is it's limit break and instead of paying 3 Counter Blast for using Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion skill, you pay no Counter Blast. So it's a really nice skill and I personally like the deck a lot and it did top in the end even though a lot of people were really skeptical about it. Now the deck that I'm mainly going to focus on for Narukami, which is the top meta deck right now, is Sweep Command Dragon. In case you don't know why it's so good, it's because of the starter that Sweep Command has. When an opponent's rear guard is retired, you can put it in the soul, look at top 10 cards, and then ride a Sweep Command if you find it from the top 10 cards. Before this set, Narukami could not really retire during the battle phase, but now they can, so that means you can get extra drive checks from extra vanguard attacks. The first card that helps that a lot is the Grade 2 Double Rare Voltage Horn Dragon. 
This card is GB1, is an Amber clone. When it attacks, if it's boosted, count as one and retire one. So you tackle your Vanguard first, attack with this second, retire one, use the starter, look at top 10, sweep command. Another card that helps that deck a lot is the rare stride, which is Lightning Dragonite Zorus. Basically, when this guy hits, you retire one, and then you bind two of the opponent's drop zone face up. But the most important part is that you fade, is, is that you retire one. So this means you attack, you hit, you retire one, starter skill, look at top 10, sweep command. But this sweep command deck got a lot of nice support cards, and the first one of which is Demonic Dragon Berserker Chitura. So first up, it cannot attack rear guards, but when it does attack, it has 11k power. Although this, its normal base is 8k, which is a bit disappointing, but the card is still very good. Because when it attacks and it hits, you can count us one, draw a card, and you drop and you choose one of your opponent's cards in the drop zone and bind them face up. This binding mechanic is so good because before this Narukami would just feed your opponent's legion by retiring everything and then they put it back to deck. But now that it's binding, they can't put it back into their deck anymore. So it's such a nice new mechanic. So there are two triple rares for Narukami in this set, but I think they don't support the sweep command deck like directly, but it's more of a nice little help. And but that doesn't really go for their main stride for that is a triple rare, which is Conquering Supreme Dragon Conquest Dragon. It really repeats a lot of words in its names and it's a bit annoying. But its skill is simply amazing. Its skill is that once per turn you can G Persona and nothing else, no counterblast, no soul blast, just G Persona. You retire one of your opponent's rear guards, and then your front row gets plus 5k for each of your opponent's front row that is left open. So basically you pump up your front front, front row by 10k most of the time. Or by or 5k still it's such a nice free field pump just for just for nothing just for G persona it's so nice and then the other triple rare is dragonic vanquisher that a lot of sweep decks run at like one or two or maybe not at all but it's quite nice since at gb2 you can stack its uh power and crits for each retire or just putting into the drop zone and then when you're when you stride on top of it then you can retire something in the front row and bind it. So it is a fair nice card. I can see it being teched in at one or two, but still I, I think four sweep command is gonna be definite in that deck. And I'm sorry that I focused so much on sweep command, but it is gonna be the best deck for Narukami right now. Now finally, we're moving on to the big boys of the set. The most important clan, the most hyped clan, the most expensive triple rare in this set, and possibly the most expensive stride so far. We're talking about Aqua Force. Now, without a trial deck, Aqua Force is not that great, so before you even think about playing Aqua Force right now, buy three trial decks, Thavas is the best, amazing, great three. Every Aqua Force build right now runs three Thavas, and then they have other backups like Maelstrom, Glory Maelstrom, Reverse Maelstrom, and stuff like that. And there's also, you could play Legions, but I have not seen that really happen a lot because it clogs up your G2 space. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go into the biggest card of the set, the big $35, the amazing card, which is Marine General of Heavenly Silk, Lambros. This guy is amazing. When he attacks, you can G Persona, and nothing else, just G Persona, to stand two of your rear guards and give them plus 10k. This doesn't sound too amazing from the bat, but if I told you that there's a 20 minute Japanese video just talking about the combos that you can do with this card, God damn, it's amazing. I'm gonna leave in the description because there are so many combos you can do with this card. You can force out like a 100k shield in one turn with this guy. And you don't really need that many combo pieces because basically every single card in your deck is a combo piece. But before I go into those combo pieces, I'm gonna talk about some of the other grade three backups that most people don't play but they introduced in the set. One of which is the Legion Michael. It's not that amazing. It's better than the previous Legions. But that's basically all they did. It's a Persona, which is already kind of eh. And then it basically stands two of your rear guards, so... It's not that amazing. The Maelstroms are better. Like, Maelstrom is just so good, and that's why it's expensive again. And the other backup grade 3 that I've seen some decks play, but I don't find him that great, which is uh, Max. His skill is nice because it's GP1 at both rear guard and vanguard. And basically, at the end of the battle that he attacked the vanguard, if it's the third battle or more, you can give plus two to one of your rear guards and change the position of two rear guards. It's not that amazing. I find the Maelstrom's better. The Legion mate of the of the new Legion is nice because he has resist, but your grade two space is so tight in Aqua Force because there's just too many good cards. And sadly, this one does not really qualify for that. One of the nice little grade ones that we got is Battle Siren Orthia. She has resist, which is already good. 
and she has a GB1 skill of Count Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, and at the end of the battle that she boosted a rear guard, you can stand uh, the, the rear guard that she boosted, but it loses 5,000 power. So it's kind of like a Title Assault, but in grade 1 form, and you have to boost the Count Blast. But Title Assault, is, Title Assault is still better, but you can run this at a few copies. I think it's a very good card. Now I'm going to talk about some of the great twos that really make the space tight, because we already have Magnum Assault and Title Assault, which are very key, but then there are some cards that force out so much pressure, and one of these is High Tide Sniper. When he attacks since his third battle or more, and it's GB1, you Soul Blast 1 and he gets 10k. For one Soul Blast, he gains 10k. This card is so good. In the sneak peeks, it was so good. In general, this card is so good. This is just, it's amazing. Like, in case the 10k from Lambros wasn't enough, you get another 10k, like, easy. And before you go into Lambros, you can already use this at your first stride, which might not, because you're never going to stride Lambros first. So you can already start pressuring your opponent with so much power and rushing them down. This card is just so, so good. Another one of my personal favorites is Saber Flow Sailor. She's GB1 with 8k power base, so it's not that amazing. But when she attacks, at the end of the battle, if that was the fourth battle or more, you retire her and you draw two. It's like a Nemain. It's such a nice card. I feel like you can run this like two or three and it's definitely like nice to accelerate your draw power. It's not as good for the rush if you're really going to just finish off your opponent early, but I think it's good to have this kind of to back you up and stuff like that. So I really personally like her, even though her art isn't the best, but her skill is just wow. There are two little nice cards in Assassinate Sailor and Tactics Sailor. Basically, when they boost and the attack hits, you either retire or you draw if it's the four battle or more. It's kind of nice if you have space, you run them. If you don't, you don't. It's one of those things. However, there is a great one that I think should be in your deck three or four times, which is Battle Siren Stacia. She's so good because she's a GB1 who can attack from the back row with 9k. So this instantly opens up one of your attacks with just 9k on anything, not just Vanguard, just rear guard, swing at it. It's amazing because this is the first card that has ever attacked from the back row from what I know. So this card is so good and it's another reason why Aqua Force is so good right now. And the final card that really scares a lot of people is Blue Storm Marine General Despina. Her skill is that when she boosts the Maelstrom Vanguard, if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, then until end of turn your opponent can't call grade zeros from hand to Guardian Circle, and then at the end she goes back to the deck. So basically, if you boost the Glory Maelstrom at limit break 5, then it's game over, because they cannot guard with anything. This is why I keep saying that the Maelstroms are really good card to tech in with Savas, or Thavas, however you want to pronounce it. And that basically wraps up the GBT02 overview. I should make a tier list, but I feel like pushing it till after Fighters Collection, because there are some cards that do change the meta. But Aqua Forest just does not stop topping. Already in Japan, Legend deck has released and Fighters Collection is out, but I have seen an Aqua Force deck top the last weekend. So, while in the English meta, I'm pretty sure this will be, Aqua Force will be the deck that tops a lot. And also Narukami is really strong as well. And I feel that Musketeers, while it's, it's still being considered as a rogue deck, I think it will catch off a lot of people that don't know how to play against it. And it's the same with Great Nature. I think a lot of people won't really expect to see it as much and they won't know how to counter it and then they'll just get they'll just die because the opponent will have like a 26 card hand and it's going to be just impossible to to kind of break through their defense unless they deck out and even then they have legions so you know royal paladin is going to stay as important as ever gear chronicle sort of got a boost but i don't think it still puts them into such a relevant spot i think narukami and Force really take the spot right now and then when legend deck comes out shadow paladin will also be important but i feel that the most important Clans from this set are Aqua Force, Narukami, Royals, they, they got a little boost, but they can also live without it. Like, they were fine from GBT01 as well, but it is a nice little boost. And I honestly really like the new Nectar support, and I feel that both Maidens and Musketeers are nice decks. And Maidens is very fun, while Musketeers, I think, is the more competitive style deck, so... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this new type of video. I don't usually do set reviews, but I hope to start doing them more and more often now. So probably next time I'll do one for Fighters Collection. And I'm also planning to start doing sort of how to build or how to play uh, decks from the new sets. And I'll be starting off with Aqua Force and helping you guys on how to play it. And also in the description you will find the 20 minute uh, combo video for just Lambros. It is in Japanese, but if you know what the cards do, you'll understand it perfectly fine. 
So yeah, that's basically it for me. I hope you guys enjoy this new kind of video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.